the backup is brought to you by the best evil person we know, Genghis Khan. No, I'm sorry. Uh, it's evil spy boy. Evil spy boy. Get your exclamation mark spy boys out in the chat because thanks to his generous Patreon support, evil spy boy is bringing you the backup. And he's hoping you bring the generosity to Food Bank Australia. Food Bank is Australia's largest food relief organization, providing 88 million year, meals a year. That's 240,001 meals a day. Even I don't eat that much. Uh, to more than 2,600 charities around the country, accounting for 79% of all food received by charities from food rescue organizations. And they also provide regular breakfast to more than 132,000 students at schools around the country uh, and 200,000 children seek relief uh, from food bank charities every single month. So if you want to be like Evil Spy Boy, in the one good thing that he does, then mm. you should head to foodbank.org.au uh, to donate. And Nightbot has shared the link in the chat right now. So if you're watching live right now, thank you, Evil Spy Boy, for sponsoring uh, the backup. And thank you, Evil Spy Boy, uh, for helping literally put food in the mouths of babes. I worry uh, that um, the escalation of this segment, <clears throat> if you choose to use that shtick at the top of uh, thanking the wrong evil person, is that going to mm -hmm. get worse and worse week by week as the person gets more and less and less comically evil from the history and more appropriately like, oh dear. Well, I think it's, it's just, it's the amount of time Mm -hmm. It gets shortened mm -hmm. and shortened, and it's yeah. like because everyone yeah. knows that tragedy plus time equals comedy. Well, um, I was about to say it's so... like there's nothing funny about Genghis Khan apart from that he was in Bill and Ted's adventure. So suddenly he's like less <laughs> scary and less killed as many people as he did. Though I do think it's important to remember that all the people that we consider abhorrent and horrific who are alive right now mm. in 500 years will be the punchline for gaming podcasts uh, on whatever Twitch is in 500 years' time. That Dr. Death so guy, about pretty that. funny. <laughs> there you go. Uh, okay, good. We've really started this show off with skirting the bounds of <laughs> cancellation. <laughs> acceptable uh, people. Um, but uh, uh, regardless... Evil Spy Boy is not associated with any of our abhorrent views and instead is someone who wants to support uh, Food Bank Australia and you should support Evil Spy Boy by supporting them as well. All right, let's jump into the news. Last week was not the biggest news week, but a big thing did happen at the end of the week, and that was the Nintendo Direct. Uh, and this was, a, this was a pretty meaty Direct. This wasn't your sort of just like... You know, hey, we've we've ported four new games to the platform. This was like big announcements, lots of titles. Uh, so we'll just go through it uh, and kind of hit everything. And if we feel like talking about it, then we'll talk about it. How does that feel, mm, boys? That feels um, yeah, like a natural progression. Put your hand up if you're a massive Kirby fan. <coughs> for the uh, for the podcast audience, no one put their hand up. <laughs> no one put their hand up. Uh, that's fine because uh, you might get your chance now because Kirby and the Forgotten Land is a 3D adventure that's launching on the Nintendo Switch in spring of 2022. So maybe, Gus, mm. all that was stopping you from loving Kirby with all of your heart was the fact that he only had two dimensions. Kirby uh, was a great character on the Game Boy. I had a Kirby Game Boy game with great music and some fun little levels. It was super easy. It was like this game that was not challenging. So it was like you could play it in a car trip and finish it every time. That was fun. I think mm -hmm. that kind of appeal, it doesn't exist anymore for video games. So like I have some nostalgia for that and for a couple of the tunes. But ever since uh, it turned like into this version of its mascot I, I don't find it as appealing um but the fact the only thing that stands out for me in this that people have been writing about and talking about is that it's this like semi it's the it's the cutest post-apocalyptic world you've ever seen because yeah. that's kind of the vibe it's been giving off with this sort of like destructed d sort of version of of the world that of the city world at least that it's in so the beginning I mean, of the trailer was sort of like D like ominous droning sounds mm. as like shots of of you know uh, abandoned shopping malls where yeah. violence has happened. <laughs> it's weird, and, and like the Kirby games have been pretty, uh, they've been received fairly well. There was like Epic Yarn, people really enjoyed. But again, they're they're the new school of Nintendo mascot games, like the Yoshi games and Kirby games, where it's like they are comically easy. They are just there for like a pleasant thing to enjoy, which a lot of people like. And I've got nothing against. I just personally don't play the, those games for those reasons anymore. I feel like this might dwell in the area of kind of like upping that difficulty or getting back to kind of a more standardized old school platformer, 3D platformer, I guess. So mm -hmm. I'll play it, but only because I'm curious about this shopping mall and like <laughs> what happened to this world. That's about it. 
<clears throat> yeah, it's uh, Pete. Can you scrub through about halfway through this trailer? Because I feel like I've watched this trailer a couple of times. Does Kirby do the thing where he sucks up? The th yes, sucks another... things up and turns into them. Yeah, there's the yeah that that's in here. Like it is he, okay. He becomes Link. Um, he becomes oh, that's why he else. gets the sword. Okay, right, yeah, right, right. Because yeah, 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 I was yeah. like. Because I was a bit concerned that it... Oh, okay, there we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, cool, cool It's cool. lost some of the key... Ele the, the one main element of Kirby, which is just, like, yeah, being able to adopt... And whoever that is. Which, that's <laughs> new, because it used to just be, like, just suck up the enemy and spit it out as a cloud, as, as a projectile. But, yes, the newer games have made it all about these powers. And Oh, there was... No, sorry. So, I yeah, since it, Smash, right? Like there was, there was the most recent Kirby before. game on Switch was actually incredibly hard. Uh, it like it was the four. It was where you played as a little. It was a side scroller. You played with up to four of them. I've forgotten the name. Uh, oh yeah. And apparently people raved about it. It was really good. So I feel like this is for following up from that a little more closely. And um, yeah, that had apparently like a pretty easy difficulty curve the whole way up. And that had one of the hardest end bosses people have talked about in history. And it just comes out of nowhere. And people are like, what is this doing in my Kirby? Kirby so, Star Allies. Is the Star game. Allies. That's the one. Yeah. So yeah, yeah similar, <laughs> similar look to, to that at least. I just find it I odd at this point. That Nintendo have so many mascots that they just put into the same genres. It's like Kirby's in side scrollers, Kirby's in 3D platformers, Kirby's in brawlers, Kirby's in. But so is Mario, and so is Yoshi, and so is like. Who's the Donkey distinct Kong. side like, scroller? Who's the best? Th yeah, it's like they've all. Uh, I don't think you necessarily have to separate genres of games by character either. It's just like. I, I, I would prefer a new Mario 3D game, I think, than... And, mm. yeah, I don't know. It's just like... Well, it's particularly... just it feels like a B version of a Nintendo 3D world because it's not Mario. And that it's was, probably that... great, but it's just like that... It takes some shine off it immediately because I'm like, oh, well, it's not a Mario game. Yeah, that mm. was exactly my feeling. That was why... Um... I asked if he did do the sacking up thing because I watched it, but I must have just missed, like, or not uh, absorbed that part. But really, it's like there's no difference between that and Mario picking up a cat suit and taking on the powers of yeah. a cat. Yeah. And you're right that I looked at this. I was like, how is this any different than Super Mario Odyssey? Except for the fact that Mario is a p pink blob and it's not really. And so, yeah, I think that it, it looks fun to play. I do think, but I had exactly the same thing where I was like, why is Kirby in this? And like, why does it need to be Kirby? just, or just like make a new character? Like, just, yeah, like yeah. you just don't need to keep living on this thing where it's like, they've been around since the Game Boy and yeah, anyway, but uh, it looks, it, but it does look fun. So it's one of those things where I'm like, yeah, it looks fun. This is what Nintendo does, right? They go, hey, we don't have a lot of new ideas, um, but this going to continue to be fun. So Yeah, especially that yeah, game I was raving well. about at the start was called Kirby's Dreamland, and there were all these fantastical worlds that were only, they were distinctly Kirby-esque, the way Mario has its, like, Mushroom Kingdom. Whereas, you're right, this feels like, apart from maybe some of the enemy types and, like, yeah, well, yeah the enemy types, it's, like, it's set in just a generic 3D Nintendo world that doesn't feel mm. distinctly, like, Dreamland was this crazy, over-the-top, essentially, yeah, 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 kind of, yeah. like, everything looked Kirby-esque, and now it's, totally. like, no, now you're in the Forgotten Land, which is just which Detroit is just Mario. in the tropics. It's just, it's exactly. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. We're in New Donk City 10 years mm. later or something. Yeah. Old Donk City. Uh, but there you go. Old Donk City. Um, uh, speaking of old Donks, the uh, Nintendo is getting an update uh, with something called an expansion pack, which includes Nintendo 64 and Sega Genesis games. Um, it is expanding the Switch Online uh, service to include these games, but uh, it is going to cost you uh, to get these, that the um, you are going to need to uh, pay extra for this expansion pack. They haven't said how much extra uh, you're going to have to pay yet um, and when it's coming out, but uh, they have announced that uh, some of the games included in the lineup <clears throat> from the 64... Super Mario 64, Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, Mario Kart 64, Star Fox 64, Sin and Punishment, Dr. Mario 64, Mario Tennis 64, Win Back, and Yoshi's Story. And then Sega Genesis games include Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Street to Rage 2, Echo the Dolphin, Castlevania Bloodlines, Contra Hardcore, uh, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, Golden Axe, Gunstar Heroes, Musha, Fantasy Star 4, Rice Star, Shining Force, Shinobi 3, Strider. So <laughs> it's a it's a list of really solid games. Like mm. there there are some all timers on that list. Uh, Gus, I feel like out of all of us, you're the person who likes to go back. You look back. You pine for the past. You wish it wasn't 2021. 
You wish you were a wee lad again. Uh, you getting this expansion? You wish you were a horse back <laughs> alongside Genghis Khan. I really do. <laughs> back in the good old... I think it's like in Zelda, but I'm like, no, good call to the Genghis Khan reference. Uh, I'm on board with this. I, I'm, I'm less about being excited about any individual games in particular and more about uh, the Switch Online service kind of filling out a little bit more. And in that case, I'm okay with the price hike. We don't know what that is, but I feel like I would like Nintendo's online service to stop being this piddly kind of... Of like seven dollars a month, fifty dollars a year thing. Or I'm not entirely sure of those, but I, I don't have it. I've I've left it, and I don't jump into it to use because I'm not paying for it. But I feel like if they fleshed it out with 64 games and like the previous NES and SNES games, they rotate them out, so it's like you download them and keep them. And it's like a, if they make it more like a Game Pass or PS Plus service, I would be okay. And Honestly, it's one of those dumb things, but it's like if I'm paying for it and they're there, I might pick up my Switch a bit more and actually play, or, you know, use it as an excuse to play some of these things. That lineup is great. Uh, it's a bold starting one. My biggest shock out of the whole thing is Winback. This game, I, I have this really strong personal attachment to. <laughs> I tweeted about it recently. It's a game that I tried to play as, a lot as a kid and couldn't get my hands on. I don't know why it's in this like roster of like Nintendo mascot games. They just put this random, very like little, hard to find in Australia game. Um, it's a great game. I can't wait to play it. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm excited by them fleshing it out. I'm going to buy the wireless N64 controller because I'm a sucker. Um, <laughs> and I might then <laughs> I start- I love this shot. I love yeah. this shot. <laughs> Him just holding up these two controllers. <laughs> Make it look natural. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I never played Sega Genesis games, so that's just a bonus as well. And yeah, if, if they push the price up to something a little closer to like 80 bucks a year or something, I feel like I'll get it and and it'll give me an excuse to play it a bit more. And they've mentioned like Majora's Mask and stuff was in that box art there. No, it's not an excuse to play it more. Hey, it'll force me... You want to give Nintendo more money. It's just such just a strange framing of what you're a talking check. about. You're like, oh, I'm not proud of it. <laughs> they don't like the. Ser- you're like the service doesn't offer a lot right now, and I don't have it. But if they uh, basically more four times charge- the price, because I think right now I, I pay like twenty five dollars a year for Nintendo Online or something. Uh, five bucks a like, month, if they but- just raised it by. <laughs> four times the amount and added these games that I, I probably won't play Dude, sometimes I just enjoy buying Steam games it. and putting them in a library. It's like, I don't play them, I just do that. So, yeah, there's, I feel like it'll scratch that little bit of You've a niche as well. you custom categories in your Steam library and one of them is definitely won't play this and it's yeah. just yeah. full. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, nice. So, yeah, no, I, I, I'm excited. I, you know, it could have been nice to see some of these. I don't know if they're going to be like HD sort of if there'll be any upscaling or any kind of they like didn't pol- say anything and I anything to make them look good will, and I, yeah, I'm, I'm actually more curious to see how an N64 game emulated runs on a Switch first and foremost um, I think it'll be playable I don't think it'll be the best environment to play it but um, yeah and I'm not going to play through Ocarina of Time from start to finish but I'm going to dabble I'm going to jump into each of them and just see how they play and get that little nostalgia kick and then move on so if, if they rotate them through as regularly as they're doing with SNES games then I'm, I'm glad the 64 on they're never going to do it with GameCube games because they're always going to save them for full price you know remakes and upgrades and uh, that kind of thing but I'm glad they have uh, stepped into my favourite era of console the arguably worst 3D games ever, the 64. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Pete, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, I, just, I just think it's, it's... This isn't what you can hike your price for. Putting, like, shitty, the shittiest versions possible of these classic games on your thing costs you nothing. This justifies and, your existing price. <laughs> yeah, but barely. This, it's not a service. Nintendo Online is barely a service. Mm. So I think like I'd be okay with a price hike if they're like, hey, we're releasing 64 games and we've f- like f- filled out the service with more features to make it easier to do party systems to and, and still safe. I mean, they're terrified of it because they're Nintendo, the family console, right? And it's like, mm. we can't have people talking to each other because you can't trust anyone talking to each other on the internet. <laughs> so I get why they're not, but it's like, this isn't a reason to hike your price. This is, this again, it's just like to justify me keeping it mm. because I don't use it. So it's like, and even even the SNES games, like I would just, if, if you, I've got cartridges of like SNES games. It's like, I'll just emulate them on my computer. That's yeah. the easiest way to play it. 
and yeah. the best looking way to play it as well. The so 64 like, is yeah. arguably one of the harder things to emulate, though. So, like, uh, yeah. There's great pe- There's Project 64 10 years ago was an excellent emulator. So this, it, yeah, but it comes down to game by game. A lot of them, some games just d- wouldn't work. I'm cool. sure Winback did not run well. On <laughs> it didn't, Peter. It didn't. And so that's why I'm excited. Now get off the case. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I think it's it's cool that these games are there, but I'm with you, Peter. I'm like, like it's one of those weird things where I'm like, Nintendo Switch Out Loud is something that I have, and it's cheap enough that I keep not being bothered to cancel it. Because yeah, yeah. the effort that I have to go to to cancel it feels like it's worth twenty five dollars of my time, um, and so uh, <laughs> I'd be curious to see what that price hike is. Like if it yeah, is I think a it, few it has extra to be, dollars be, or it's triple, it and you're like, whoa, it can't be doubled. No, because be then double. you're just like, yeah. that's that's insane. Uh, I agree. I agree. <clears throat> Moving on to more things that seemingly disappointed people. I feel like this could be a negative uh, kind of rundown of Nintendo's announcements. <clears throat> uh, Bayonetta three gameplay was revealed a 2022 release date was revealed or release window sorry not actual date um this is four years after we first heard about bayonetta 3 uh we get a look at some gameplay uh and this is a game that i really liked the first bayonetta and then i didn't play the second one and uh this third one i was like yeah i'm totally i'm totally down for a bayonetta i love that i love the idea of the hair um even though this kind of like Devil May Cry style action game is generally not what I'm into. <clears throat> it has, there's just something about the the style and the attitude of it that sort of like, I just, I like that. But, oh boy, this game does not look good on the Switch. And that was kind <laughs> of the big thing that I saw coming out of this is that Bayonetta is a series kind of defined by like, strong style and cool look and just like a lot happening on screen at once (laughs) yeah absolutely and this just looks like so muddy and so the switch is just screaming in pain as it's using all of its little electrode synapses to try to render everything in time and it just looks like it's buckling under its own weight um uh pete bayonetta three is it happening no thank you (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything good to say about Bayonetta. They're not my types of games, and I feel like they're just like <laughs> stupid, mm-hmm. a stupid version of a of a genre that does nothing for me. The the closest thing that um, who's a developer again? Is Deep Platinum Silver? Games? No, Platinum Games. Platinum, Platinum Games. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is Platinum Games. Uh, the closest thing Platinum Games made to a game that was anything that I was interested in was the Wonderful One Hundred and One um, on the Wii U, which was like, I think embraced the the quirkiness in the right ways and was just like a really platform specific thing it was just fun to play with that wii u pad mm-hmm. um and yeah and then you know and this has no color it has the same craziness but in a real world setting it just feels stupid and mm. yeah it just doesing do anything for me i, I, I don't want to say people like bayonetta and that's fine but i'm just like it, Nick, I would you're be probably fine if Bayonetta didn't exist. One who would be the most excited, would be the most interested in playing this out of the three of us. I, yes, share all the same things that Pete said there. I will say that Bayonetta 2 was strictly a Wii U and a Wii U designed game. So I'd be, I, I feel like this isn't going to feel like a, a port. Like Bayonetta 1 was out on all the consoles. So therefore, yeah, maybe, you know, the Switch port of that will be would have run difficultly but but like this is designed from the ground up to work on the switch so i the switch can do cool things when it is uh when the developers keep that in mind from the start and there's been a big development process uh, like you know uh roadmap on this one so I, I wonder if they'll be able to harness the power in the right ways and not cause it to brick up but i totally see what you're saying will you will you give this a go at least Oh yeah, I'll totally give it a shot. Um, the because the, the funny thing about Bayonetta, Bayonetta is a series that people who like it love it, and most people don't like it enough that no one wanted to publish Bayonetta two, and so Nintendo were the only ones who would do it. And the same with Bayonetta three. So that's the reason that Bayonetta two was a Wii U exclusive, and the reason that this is a Switch exclusive is that no other publisher <clears throat> wanted to take it on board. But I'm looking right now at like Bayonetta on PC from five years ago. And it looks 
40 times better than what I'm looking at here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I did see quite a bit of disappointment from people around this one. We'll have to see how it goes. Obviously, this is just like one little slice, one little look at the game. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just it's not exactly what uh, what we're looking for. But, uh, yeah, there is also a tease that potentially Virgil from Devil May Cry uh, might appear. There's a little tease. Uh, there at the end of the game, so that's gotten Devil May Cry people excited. Uh, so there you go. Uh, from a game with uh, not a lot of color to a game with tons of color, and we got some uh, gameplay from Splatoon 3. No update to the 2022 release window, uh, but the gameplay trailer uh, did show off its return of the Mammalians uh, single player campaign. Uh, and this was all introduced by a squid researcher from Nintendo, which uh, I hadn't I hadn't watched <laughs> the, the direct the, the, on Friday morning. And then when I jumped on a call with you guys, you were like, "Did you watch the Splatoon thing?" <laughs> and Pete, what was what was it that caught your eye about how they presented this? Well, it's like they had uh, a developer in a lab coat talking about the footage as though they were uh, watching it after the fact and reacting to it. Mm -hmm. And we were shown footage of the Splatoons leaping in and out of the ink. And it's like, yeah, you fucking coded that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bit that they've touched on before, though. Like, they've had hit the developer come out in that kind of character uh, of, the de of the researcher of the squid. Like, it's dumb. It's dumb. But they've done it before. And that's, they're clearly like, this is something we should return to. And it's like, you really shouldn't. <laughs> I, I am. I mean, you know, whatever. It's yeah. cute. It's they they, they try things. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is that's yeah, endearing. Yeah, 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 of course. And um, Splatoon, Splatoon's great. I really like Splatoon. Splatoon is tons of fun. Um, it's it's interesting that Splatoon three is a thing because yeah. I'm kind of looking at this going, this Doesn't looks look exactly the same 1. as Splatoon two, and Splatoon two looked exactly the same as Splatoon one. I, I can only think it's just because like, hey, we're just gonna you buy a new game i guess yeah. because there is a level of like it's i think i think of it as a multiplayer game but there is always like a single player campaign in these and so therefore that that's the sort of like hey we release the new single player campaign and then the new multiplayer comes along um i i will definitely play this because i, I actually played a surprisingly large amount of splatoon 2 i really enjoyed it um and it's and and splatoon is exactly and Splatoon 3 will probably land at the perfect time, exactly the kind of game I want to introduce uh, my son to because it's basically the only shooter where he doesn't, he's not carrying around actual guns. So it's like you can get the enjoyment of like that, that sort of like hand-eye coordination thing. It will prep you for when you, you inevitably you start like Fortnite and you do finally get to murder someone. Um, but uh, but this is, it's such a friendly, fun, they're basically just, you know, water pistols. Uh, and so I think that he will have a blast learning how to play this. He'll get smashed because he'll only be four and a half. Well, it still, it but, still um, has that wonderful thing, which is why the formula of Splatoon works so well, which is, yeah, it's the, the lack of actual weaponry, but also the idea that he can just have fun running around painting areas of the world and like he is mm. actually still contributing um totally yeah. like yeah covering the little corner like kids going i just like getting into the start and getting the roller and just doing circles over the home base area and just keeping it you know whatever color our team is and that that that's what i think makes splatoon such a winning formula you're right yeah. i'm i'm gonna jump into this i i love splatoon i i'm sad that this is now the second time we're going to see basically the the uh, like i haven't jumped into two for a while but they set so much up every time in one and two and then you slowly see that lobby become smaller and smaller mm -hmm. and then you realize every multiplayer game you jump into has like elite players who are like playing this game with sniper rifles at the, the tail of each map and you're like oh this stops being that fun crazy everyone just in it for fun and just the elite players are still left in there and then it gets quieter and quieter the um the splatoon based events stop and then the next one comes out and it's like i feel really bad for these yeah it's happened twice now after there's so much charm and personality in each city each title but um the single player campaigns are getting better and better in each one to the point that the last game had a dlc single player campaign which was fantastic so mm. i reckon they're going to put a lot more into this uh campaign both with the ideas and also um with the i think the the length of it i feel like it's going to fill out more than just you know it'll almost be half the game i think the campaign whereas it yeah. feels like an afterthought in the previous titles yeah totally. which is cool 
Um, you're, you're right, though. If you want to get the most out of the multiplayer, it's not a game that develops over years. You want to jump on there <laughs> week one. Get in there when it's party when it's, mode for the first yeah. six months and then totally. get out once you've had your fill. Because, <laughs> yeah, it gets weird after that. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of weird, Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak uh, DLC announced for 2022. Uh, it's got a new story, new locations, new monsters, new hunting actions and quest Ooh. ranks uh, when Sunbreak is released next year. Uh, it, they highlighted the, quote, eerie new setting in the trailer but say more details on the upcoming expansion plus new monsters and gameplay will be revealed soon um none of us have really stuck with monster hunter rise but uh this is exactly the sort of support that uh monster hunter fans are looking for for this and monster hunter rise got a, a lot of really positive uh vibes so i'm sure that the monster hunters among us would be very excited for a, a big meaty update uh to the game totally yep uh, more, more monsters and more hunting what Come more on. could you ask for? Come on. Uh, Animal Crossing is also getting its own direct in October. Um, with uh, It's been out for about 18 months. I mean, this was this was out at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, this yeah. was the game that saved everyone in that first month where we were like, hey, we got to spend a month inside and then we'll probably be okay. <laughs> yeah, now I look at this game with resentment. <laughs> like, I hate totally, this yeah, game. It's memories of, of, it's memories of an awful time. <laughs> memories of when I had hope still. And now I'm like... Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so it's getting another expansion. Uh, we are going to have to wait a little little bit longer uh, for it. It will get its own direct in October. Uh, we saw a little tease there in the museum. Um, uh, there's an expansion to the museum coming, which will include Brewster's Coffee Shop uh, and uh, uh, The Roost is coming soon as well. I don't know what The Roost is, but... Uh, it's coming, so there you go. Uh, Mario Party <laughs> Superstars sees the return of Woody Woods, Yoshi's Tropical Island, and Horrorland. A new gameplay trailer was revealed for Mario Party uh, Superstars. Uh, it will be playable when it launches on October 29th. They're on maps, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, boards, classic boards yeah. from the oh, yeah. Nintendo 64 version, um, Gus's favorite platform. Uh, Woody Woods, oh, yeah. Yoshi's Trop Tropical Island, and Horrorland. And there'll also be Mount Minigames uh, minigame mode that includes competitive survival course and cooperative multiplayer course tag match there's a lot of information coming at us there uh do either of you have an affinity from mario party superstars it was honestly the the first one on 64 jokes aside and i tried to play the newest one with some friends and it was like it's one of those games you play that you feel old when you play it you realize there's no none of the joy that you all had at sleepovers playing it is still there when you're mm -hmm. all a lot older going you realize this doesn't count until the last round where they just give bonus stars to people. Like, that mechanic is still there and it is still, you know, yeah, criminally, it's... like, makes everyone upset over the age of 15. It may, like, as well just be, like... it may as well just be called Rubber Band. Like, There's it's... no esports scene for Mario Party <laughs> Superstars, that's for sure. That's true. Um, that true so not but really. yeah, they, they're, really, they're really sweet and fun and the, the facelift that it gets, you know, the same as Mario Kart. It's like Mario Kart's the same freaking game, but it's like... It's, yeah. I, I think it's, it's cool that there's one on this platform for people of the right age to enjoy this. Um, yeah, cool. And so I, I don't think, this I don't think the nostalgia yeah. impact of, of having Woody Woods or something, some map you recognize from 64 era is going to really pull in the, the 30 pluses mm. to go like, oh, cool, now I have to get it. Because it's like, it really isn't a fun game <laughs> the mini games the mini games are fun but it's like it's not like you could trade it for a board game or something at a party with adults because it's yeah. just as gus said the result is so random really that it just feels un totally underwhelming at the end mm. but the journey is fun and playing the mini games is fun so. Whimsy Bobbins in the chat says, My kids find the current Mario Party really depressing and unfair. It causes tears every time they try and okay. play it. And okay. I can I can totally see that. Yeah. It is it is funny. I, I do feel like this is uh, this is a super broad statement, but I think that Nintendo have just not cottoned on to the idea that more things have come out since like 20 years ago when they were really releasing this stuff that these sort of like party game formulas have been iterated on and developed and that they're still just trying to do the same thing um like looking at the pretending the things like jackbox and that sort of stuff don't exist uh yeah it's just it is interesting like you said going back and you just you feel old playing this stuff give me mario party fortnite or imposter mode i'd be okay with it now honestly i'd play the shit out of that <laughs> yeah totally totally i get kind of like i would not be surprised except for the fact that we'll get it in 20 years time because that's yes, how long yeah. it will take them to like iterate on that but yeah like it, imagine that's such a good point imagine if they took basically like put into smash brothers a 
Among Us mode. Mm. That yeah. It would it would go off. Like, it would absolutely go off. Uh, but yeah, they won't. Um, okay, so by far, the most talked about controversial borderline insane announcement that uh, they made during this direct is Miyamoto came out and announced uh, the cast and release date of the Super Mario Brothers movie. Now, believe it or not, the release date is not the thing that people are freaking out about. Uh, it is coming December 1st, 2022. Oh my God. I know. <clears throat> um, but everyone will know by now, so there's no use hyping it up. Uh, the, the cast includes Chris Platt, Pratt, who will play Mario, Anna Taylor Joy playing Peach. Different Chris, not this. Charlie Chris. Day, <laughs> different Chris. Charlie Day uh, will play um, uh, Peach. Luigi. Uh, sorry, Luigi. Uh, <laughs> oh. I, 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 <laughs> it's a long, it's a long list here. Charlie Day playing Peach, though. I would actually back. I uh, was playing Luigi. Jack Black playing Bowser. Keegan Michael Key uh, uh, is Toad? playing uh, Toad. Seth Rogen is playing Donkey Kong, and then Charles Martinet, who voices Mario, will appear as special characters. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's just. Look at that fucking face. Look at that. When this <laughs> picture came up, when this picture of Chris Stop Pratt squinting. came up, <laughs> Miyamoto comes up and goes, Mario will be played by Chris Pratt. And then there's a beat and he goes, he's so cool. <laughs> Um, and yeah, but that, that says so much that that gives the idea of the fact that as Japanese developers, I think I mentioned this to you guys before. It's like if you were offered these a listers to voice your characters in your film, you would say yes, because you just you want as much star power behind your film as possible. That's not to say there's like bad. It's a bad decision from the them as the, the, the makers of this property it's just like it's yeah i i think it's the it's the choice they would have made thinking it's the right one without some of the like the western world kind of all the problems we have with these character actors for different reasons and things and so i don't really feel like the blame's on them i just feel like that's the good donkey Kong. of course the blame's <laughs> it, on they don't need star power like the, yeah the reason, you're right. the, the reason that like shark's tail cast will smith yes is because it's like no one knows what shark a shark's, shark's tail is and so therefore Will Smith, but it's like there's a new Will Smith movie. Out. You don't. You could say Mario to basically anyone. Anyone who has access to a television on the planet will know who Mario is, and so you don't need to cast Hollywood superstars, uh, and particularly but, like. But I think it's Chris Pratt. Is like I think we're all kind of okay with all the other casting, aren't we? Like the majority of it. Pete was just saying like um Seth. Uh, Rogan as Donkey Kong is interesting. I have a feeling that there'll oh, be- I was laughing because it's bad. <laughs> oh, okay. I take it back. I, I have a I have a, a feeling that they're going to go in a, a somewhat strange direction with the voices and the characters. It's not just going to be like, here's yeah, a story- Yeah, tell us your theory because you came up with this. And I think this yep. sounds awful, but I also don't think that it's out of the realms of possibility. Oh, it's, so. I, I don't want it to be this, but I just have a feeling that there'll be like Mario and his cute voice will exist in the, wor in the Mushroom Kingdom and stuff like that. And I'm not talking a Bob Hoskins style. They come into the real world or something like that but i can, can't completely say that won't happen there'll be some version of it where it's like you know the kind of wreck it ralph like when they stop playing the game and they walk out of it and then he goes from being all like it's me mario to being like oh i can't believe i just finished another you know they're employees of the video game or there'll be like the fact that Keegan so you say like, so you're you're saying and 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 uh, like i i just want to clarify that please. Uh, that um the character of Mario in the game is actually American, and he's put he puts on an Italian voice for the game, and yes. then and and, and, and also he leaves it is the funny. booth and he's like fucking day man. Yeah, it comes in. Well, the fact <laughs> yeah, that just Toad, the, the, it, it, the yeah. fact that they've got Toad voiced by uh is it King and Michael? Like he he'll be doing like. A, a snarky kind of like attitude filled voice. I feel he's not going to be in Toad just going wah like, <laughs> like yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. he's yeah. going to be doing a voice that like juxtaposes yeah. that character. And so by that, I have a feeling they're going to do something similar with all these these characters, like Keegan Michael Key. Sorry, yeah, I feel like that's that's a clue as to a lot of them are going to have like sort of nuances about the characters. Like Luigi will be nervous. I think Peach will be kind of like a bit more headstrong. Donkey Kong will be like a bit stonery and a bit kind of the way he's like ah oh, a bit dopey, but like. They're still going to have these weird personalities outside of the game. I don't think it's going to be good. I just think they're going to try for an angle with it. And like, I, yeah, I think they they definitely need to they definitely need to um do something because like Detective Pikachu was a very good idea of how to mm. handle that. Like it was like, oh yeah, this is like the best way to do 
what we're trying to do with this because it is weird to think that there will be Mario will be talking a lot. Like you said, like Toad will be talking a lot is a strange thing. It's just um I think that I, I, I did see um uh, a lot of people going like uh, uh, Mario should be played by an Italian. This is ridiculous that they've cast an American. It's like Mario's already played by an American. Charles Martinet is an American. Uh, Charles Martinet should be playing Mario um, yeah. because he is he's literally the voice Nick, of Mario. It's Martinet, so it's uh, Sorry, it is Ma- a foreign yeah, it's a foreign French, French American. <laughs> he's I don't French. know I don't know how but, but potentially I don't know what I don't know a lot of his like uh, other work um, when it comes to uh, voice acting. All the other Mario he does Waluigi he does Waluigi Mario. Totally. Mario. And, and so I I do you might think hear that him I, as... <laughs> I, I saw people being like, how, how dare they not cast him? But like, there's a difference between like doing a voice for a ca- character in a game who says the occasional line and like actually having to emote and perform. Um, yeah, it's a little bit back to the Toy Story argument of like when Toy Story being one of the first big films to hire Hollywood A-listers to do voices as opposed to actual professional voice artists. Yeah. And the like the shitstorm that happened around that of like, you got Tom Hanks instead yeah. of using like, you know, someone, someone else who could, someone whose name we don't know. Yeah. Someone yeah. whose name you just don't know. Um, so it's like, <laughs> I see a little bit of that backlash. I don't think it's, you necessarily need Charles Martinet to do this stuff. Um, but I, I don't really know what this film is. Yeah. That's and the thing. I, like- you, you can't, you can't, I just don't see a world where you make a, a Mario film with Charlie Day, Jack Black and Keegan Michael Key. That they're adults, uh, they're a- adult actors, right? I mean, maybe it's for the parents, right? To go like, oh yeah, we recognize that. We recognize Seth Rogen's voice going <laughs> as Donkey Kong walks on screen or whatever. <laughs> it's just going to be the worst fucking thing ever. But like, maybe it'll appeal to someone. But it's still, they still got to have to make an animation for to appeal to a younger audience. So. Oh. I mean, like, like the best we can hope for is Wreck It Ralph. That kind of like all these games Nintendo have been mashed together yeah. in some way. That's yeah, totally. That, that's um, exactly. It. There's got to be a scene where Mario falls through some sort of portal. It'll be in the trailer, and he's going whoa. And then as he comes through the portal, he goes whoa, whoa, yeah, what yeah. happened? And then he goes whoa. And then he comes through and he goes, "What yeah, goes, oh, the fuck was that? Jesus yeah. Christ!" <laughs> And it'll be Chris Pratt and there'll be some crap device for why he is in a different sounding space and world and all the other characters hear their own voices and go like, I guess this is what happens when we fall through. It's kind of like the Lego movie. When you eat magic mushrooms. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I Donkey do Kong think- will be about. That Seth Rogen is definitely going to have a line about eating mushrooms and then go. A hundred percent. And I do. And, and uh, the last thing on this, I do think that a lot of the backlash, like the Chris Pratt thing was the main thing. Mm. I think that the, the screenshot didn't help of this like very earnest screenshot of him. Um, yeah. But I, I think there's also just there's. It, uh, there's, uh, I'm going to call it Pratt back, which is backlash against Chris Pratt. And I have been Pratt leading lash. the Pratt. Uh, I've been l- leading the Pratt lash charge um, since day one because as soon as he left uh, Parks, and, Parks Rec. and Rec, he stopped being in- an engaging, interesting person to see on screen. Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy, Jurassic Park, Jurassic the Park, one oh, where he was the, the passengers, the, the, the passengers. passengers. The one where he's Basically, a bit rapey every, in the every single yeah. movie he's yeah. been in um, since uh, since Parks and Rec. He's just like they're trying to make him that like Hollywood like a- studio star, yeah. and he's just yeah. like he's he he is a personality vacuum. I think on screen, and and people are kind of like, God, why do we need to see, keep seeing Chris Pratt's fucking face everywhere? And also, that- like, and advice for all of us and any future films that are casting people as the voice actors of cute characters that are well established, don't launch with this picture. You get a picture of them, colourful, with their arms crossed, and you put that character on their shoulder. On going, their shoulder, yeah, and exactly. I, I would still hate him, but I'd be like. Oh, look, he knows who Mario is. He's got he, Mario he in his shoulder. So yeah. And there's right Jack Black so with true. Bowser going, like, as there's That's fire so on him, like, all of that. Why they the fact that, that they've got this stuff know. says yeah. to me, we signed the contract this morning and we just mm-hmm. and we just mm-hmm. grabbed his IMDb profile picture uh, as opposed to, like, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Get that. Okay. <laughs> so we don't need to wait long. It's basically a year for this movie, so we're going to start seeing trailers sort of mid next year. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But, yeah. Uh, I, I'm sorry, the final thing I want to say, beyond the he's so cool line, the other line that I <laughs> love, and, again, this is, this is totally just a like, this is just how Nintendo to do it when they announced uh luigi they said uh charlie day as luigi beat i can't wait uh for audiences to see this timid trailer uh, to this timid character on screen it's like 
timid character cast is not the wrong a description person. that that like but uh, you've cast the wrong person but also like that doesn't get me excited about your movie no. like, oh this timid character Ooh, instead goodness, put, put up all like put up all the is. put up all the always sunny memes which i've been uh, seeing this weekend which have been spot on so yeah, yeah. that's my yeah. <laughs> being excited <sighs> there you go um <laughs> what a mess moving on to something that i am actually excited about uh and i've even got the demo of the game on my switch right now yokotaro's card game uh rpg voice of cards is heading to switch this october uh, we got a good look at the upcoming card base RPG, uh, Voice of Cards, The Isle Dragon Roars, uh, which is coming out on 28th of October. Uh, it's a turn-based RPG where everything, um, which is like characters, shops, environments, towns, rocks, other other things that you find in nature are all represented on a tabletop uh, via cards. And uh, it looks pretty cool. Like I said, there's a demo out now on the eShop. And I have had a couple of people contact me um, via Twitter and uh, by the back pocket Discord saying you need to check this out because this is actually really really cool. So uh, this was this was like the one thing, and I mean it is the it's the least Nintendo we kind of thing <laughs> that they showed off over the over the course of the whole thing. Uh, but I, I think this looks uh, this looks pretty neat, and I'm keen to check this out. Yeah, let us know on Thursday what it's like. <laughs> I will. Um, yeah. Disney Magical World 2 Enchanted Edition uh, is coming to Switch as well. Uh, it lets players <laughs> hang out with classic Disney characters like Mickey <laughs> Mouse <laughs> while crafting art. That was bang on. That was very good. <laughs> um, exploring Disney World and much more. Uh, the game will arrive in holiday 2021 and includes all the DLC from the original 3DS version. So if you missed out on Disney Magical World 2. Uh, then you, you it still looks like a 3DS game. How charming. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> what are the odds? Um, okay, there was a ton of other stuff as well. I'm just going to burn through it. Stop me if there's something here that you want to talk about. Okay. Uh, Dying Light 2 Stay Human. We're getting a cloud version uh, and the Platinum Edition coming in Nintendo Stop. Switch. Stop. That's interesting. Didn't realize cloud versions, cloud gaming was on Switch at all. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah, and that's yeah. A, that's a good way for that system to just, you know, it's only going to be streaming to the handheld a 720p thing so mm -hmm. cool that's yeah, good th uh, they can play they, these modern games and not have a, to doomify them and play the absolute worst version of from memory resident there's a cloud evil. version of the forgotten city on switch at the moment yeah right there's uh there's resident evil 7 assassin's creed odyssey control hitman 3 all have cloud versions on the switch which uh apparently work you know pretty well um super smash brothers ultimate dlc fighter will be revealed in early october uh star wars knights of the old republic is coming to switch this november as well um uh so there you go castlevania advanced collection brings four classic castlevania games to switch out now available right now castlevania circle of the moon castlevania harmony of dissonance castlevania aria of sorrow and castlevania dracula x um very lots of people are very excited about that one um arc razor renaissance is a remastered version of the snes arc, arc sorry act razor uh and is out now um i have no affinity for that Never uh, project trying Project Triangle Strategy is now called Triangle <laughs> Strategy, and it will be released. Stop. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I'm literally just saying stop. Like, I can't believe they're still doubling down on this is not a, like, working title name at the moment. It's great. Wasn't there more to it than that as well? It was, like, Project Triangle Well, the fact that it was strategy, Project Triangle. A tactics game or something like that? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe. The fact that it was called Project Triangle Strategy is like, well, the project clearly implies that it's, like, a working title. And then they're like, we've removed the project. It's like, oh my god! <laughs> it, it, it does say it. Well, to be fair, it. Uh, I'm looking at the page right now. The Nintendo page for the game when they released the demo was Project Capital P Lowercase Project, and then all capital letters Triangle Strategy, and yeah. then in brackets Working Title Debut de <laughs> Debut Demo, and it was like they just. They just talked themselves into it by making capital letters for the words triangle strategy. They looked at it, they go, you know, if we just drop the project, then we've, na we've nailed it. <laughs> um, so that's also coming out in March 2022. Uh, Mario Golf Super Rush is getting new characters and courses. Uh, yeah. Koopa Trooper and uh, Ninji are coming out and all new courses, uh, they're available right now. Delta Rune yeah. Chapter 2 is out now on the Switch. Delta Rune, the, uh, the new sort of like... The semi sequel kind sequel. of a sort to Undertale. Yeah, to Undertale. Um, uh, the first first chapter got like mixed reviews, so I'd be curious to see if people are super if this delivers. But I can't imagine anything lives up to Undertale just based on the fact that that game will, will only live as people's like favorite game of all time. So 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say I appreciate chat and all the varied opinions we have. Aussie Manny uh, for Project Triangle. That title sucks. And then the next the next comment is Multifish. Triangle Strategy is a great name. Um, <laughs> I think Multifish is trolling a bit. I would hope. Surely. So. Surely. Um, <laughs> uh, Disco Elysium coming to Switch on October 12th. Great place for that game. Great place for that game. You think? Um, okay. Yeah, isn't, there a, lot, isn't a, there a lot of small text? <laughs> it's fully yeah, voiced. Oh, I, actually, though, I don't know. Oh, is if, it the special uh, version? Is it the special it's edition? The this cut? One. It is the final cut. Yep. Yeah, so it's yeah, fully voiced. Okay. That's good. Uh, Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity gets a new expansion uh, pass. Gets some new expansion pass content. Uh, Shadow Run Trilogy is bringing the three classic RPGs to Switch in 2022. They'll play Stop. well. I'm, I was going to say that that'll be well. great. And mm-hmm. I'm curious about the trilogy being. Does that include the first Shadow Run, which I played on Super Nintendo? It was there like I know there were these kind of like upgraded versions for advances and like Game Boy Advances and stuff, um, but I don't even know what these old games were. So I love the original Shadow Run, and I want to check this out. Uh, you are going to get um, uh, d- 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 Shadow Run Returns, Shadow Run Dragonfall Director's Cut, and Shadow Run Hong Kong Extended Edition. Okay, so none of the ones I like. Excellent. Let's nope. move on. <laughs> uh, Rune Factory you Five and its, uh, and its farming and RPG action are going to arrive on the Switch in 2022, and then Arcade Archives Pac Man and uh, Exvius add more arcade classics to Switch out now. So more arcade games on the Switch. There you go. Uh, so that is very literally everything that they announced at the uh, Nintendo Direct. Junkie. I think that uh, overall it was like there's lots of stuff here. Very little of it sort of talks to me. One item in particular makes me baffled and confused to the point of anger. Uh, and then that card thing looks pretty cool. So <laughs> that's, that's that's my synopsis. I walked story. away from it going to a website to see if I could buy that wireless N64 controller yet. I can't. So that was my takeaway. <laughs> It, uh, it's a nice controller. I will give them that. And I think that that's, that's, that's cool. Uh, okay, let's move on uh, and quickly wrap up uh, some other stories from the week. Uh, Crystal Dynamics are coming in to help the initiative on that Perfect Dark reboot that we learned about, uh, I think it was only like six or seven months ago, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, the initiative, who are a new studio um, uh, formed, I believe, to make this game specifically, uh, will be yep. partnering with uh, Marvel Avengers and Tomb Raider's Crystal Dynamics to develop the upcoming uh, reboot of Perfect Dark. Um, this uh, is a bit of a surprising announcement coming just a few months after they announced that, hey, we're doing it, we've got it, and it's kind of like, did you did you bite off more than you can chew? Uh, mm-hmm. But it's not that surprising that they've approached Crystal Dynamics because the studio was actually formed uh, from previous... Uh, Former employees uh, at yeah, Crystal Dynamics. Crystal Dynamics, yeah. Um, anything you want to read into this? I would just say, yeah, I think it's... I think it's- Nice asking for help when you need it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> or as you uh, said, yeah, Pete, to say that like the positive sentiment around the idea of them joining and not being some kind of forced merger or it's because they dropped the ball or everything was, you know, from the public's perspective of it at the moment, it seems like it's a positive step because they see good things from that studio being like, we can make a better game. But yeah, it's nice yeah, to have I, positivity. Yeah, I do think, I think it's, um, I think it's an obvious choice because a lot of the people working at the initiative will have worked with people at Crystal Dynamics. There'll be some, like, a, a, it'll be a reasonably smooth uh, process because it's not necessarily going to be, like, a new relationship forming. Yep. It's tapping into existing relationships, um, which will help the process of, you know, getting a team from Crystal Dynamics in to help out. Um, it is, I guess, interesting that... I think it's the right choice, but it's also interesting that Microsoft have so many dev teams, right? Like... They own it, basically everyone, including the initiative. Uh, it's like Crystal Dynamics, they I'm don't really own. worked on a shooter. So it's like they could have gotten a Bethesda arm to throw some like people their way. Um, so it's good, I think, that they chose to outsource to the right people instead of the just people that they had yeah. on hand. Um, yeah. that, that sounds right to me. Um, and yeah, again, it's 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 good that the initiative knew that they were maybe had bitten off a bit more than they could chew, or you know they had a, a publisher like Microsoft above them to help them find the right team to help them with the the development because this Perfect Dark needs to be shit hot um, mm. because the last one was not, and there's still a lot of 
there's still a lot of love for Perfect Dark from the 64 days. And it's just like, it's a cool idea. Joanna Dark was a cool character. There's some fun weapons and stuff in it. And then Project Dark Zero was this like really a flop of a shooter. Just totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so if this doesn't stick, then I think the Perfect Dark name will have been dragged through the mud for too long for it to mm -hmm. have another crack at coming back. Um, so, yeah, it's good that, you know, obviously they need help and they're getting it. So uh, um, fingers crossed that they, that they get the help they need. I like the in the tweet that they announced this. They said, perfect dark update. We are partnering with Crystal Dynamics, the world-class team behind character-driven games such as Tomb Raider to bring this first-person sp spy thriller to a new generation. The teams couldn't pass up a chance to work together. We're still early in development, but incredibly excited to use this unique opportunity to deliver on the vision for Perfect Dark. Um, and uh, then Crystal Dynamics quote tweeted that, saying that they're excited to join forces and are thrilled to add Perfect Dark to our development efforts alongside Marvel's Avengers and Tomb Raider. I do think it's funny that, and, and I, I would do exactly the same thing, the initiative like uh crystal dynamics you know the developers who made tomb raider tomb raider pay no attention to marvel avengers um and, <laughs> uh, but, but you look at marvel avengers and you go well actually from all accounts the single player stuff there is the best part of that game what they weren't good at is the persistent uh you know games as a service yeah. thing and yeah. tomb raider m would mesh wonderfully with uh perfect darks uh, in terms of like gameplay and that sort of thing so i think that yeah this is this is cool and it's it's nice that um that they'll get to work together and pete i i think you're right that it's like you got one more chance at this because that perfect dark reboot salted the earth for 10 years <laughs> and so <laughs> gus was not happy no i i would just add that yeah like the only caution i have there is as i mentioned it's like crystal dynamics working on a shooter which i would hope this is like that's the thing i think people have a lot of affinity with perfect dark being a follow-up to goldeneye being a great shooter and it's like mm -hmm. it takes a lot these days to capture a you know it's a saturated market and crystal dynamics seem to be like not solely third person action but that's what they've excelled in developing in the past so yeah be curious to see what facet not to say people can't change the direction of what genres they develop for but i'd be curious to see how they put a an interesting coat of paint over this being a tight shooter maybe with third person elements yeah i would knows? like this to i would actually like this to be a third person game yeah we don't need we don't need more first person shooters i agree and i, I agree. think and i think the perfect <laughs> unfortunately world, you are getting one because they are they have said it's a first person i know, spy thriller, I know. Yeah. but uh, like the the world of this this character is like so much more interesting than cod rifleman like it's a it, they're a splinter cell style character right so it's like yeah it's disappointing like i and and i, and I wanted to be some cool stealth and first person stealth is usually pretty average uh yeah totally um but thought. uh but yeah uh we'll see how this goes it's still obviously extremely early on for this uh but we'll learn enough time later. to make it third person enough time enough to make time. it the game game is a service <laughs> um <laughs> yeah good uh respawn gotta put a handle on their people because uh, respawn i feel like uh beloved right now can't do anything wrong really except for their community coordinator jason gaza who uh said um uh, last week on a live stream that uh he was asked about any comments on titanfall to which he responded quote don't get your hopes up, man. I've said this before. We don't have anything in the works. There's nothing. There's nothing there. We've got too many other games in the works right now. Um, and then, uh, so everyone was like, okay. Like all the report, uh, all the reporting came out of like, right, Respawn have too many other games that they're working on to work on Titanfall 3. And then, <laughs> and then uh, Respawn's Twitter account, who I assume he has some... He's the community coordinator, so I'm sure he has some impact it too. Tweeted out, contrary to what some folks are reporting, Titanfall is the very core of our DNA. Who knows what the future holds? And it's like, a winky okay. face. Uh, yeah, and it's like, okay, first of all, cool. I want, I definitely want there to be a Titanfall three, so that's great. But second of all, it's not what some folks are reporting. It's what one of your employees said. Like, don't mm. don't lump this of like, oh, there's just reporters out there taking things out of context. It's like <laughs> this this literally came from. Came from inside the house. 
It just reeks of damage control, honestly. It's that thing of saying, like, why, like, you're, you're on a live stream, so you, of course you're going to say something stupid. I can testify that happening a lot. Um, but it's the, essentially the idea of, like, why would you exclude a fan base that love a product of yours? Why would you do, you know, publicly, you shouldn't really say anything that would sever that arm and make them go, well, if they're not going to make anything in the future, maybe I lose some, some of my love for, um, for Respawn, being your diehard Titanfall fans. And, so he's made that statement, which I, it's 100% true, I believe. I, they, they, that comes from someone who knows the in, inner workings and knows that they do not have the resources and they are not making a Titanfall 3. But mm. instantly, that just turns into damage control of what the hell are you doing? We have people out there who will wear Respawn t-shirts because they love that game and hope there's going to be a third and you can't kill hope. So, yeah, that is what that... <laughs> That's what that return that that comment that's what is. The, that's what the the subheader of Titanfall three will be. Yeah, you can't, you can't kill, kill hope. hope. Can't kill hope. Twenty twenty thirty four release date. BB or whatever his name was. <laughs> yeah, his, but you his can fist fire Jason. Punch out of- <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, him. the, uh, I did say there was a funny article. I can't remember, uh, cause I saw the first article I saw, it may have been Kotaku, but they, they basically said, um, that they liked the fact that the, that the community coordinator came out and was pretty explicit about it. Of like, mm. there's nothing there. We got nothing. There's too many other games. And they were like, I appreciate that because most companies would just come out with a statement going like, well, <laughs> never say never, or yeah. who knows, who knows what's coming. And then, and then like, I really refresh that page an hour later and it just says edit welp they ruined it and then it just <laughs> respawns saying who knows what the future holds dot 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 yeah. <laughs> you uh, can't yeah, kill fine. hope <laughs> yeah. uh, and too busy around- working on project triangle titan exactly <laughs> uh, and then rounding out uh, announcements and delays for the week uh, the good life is getting a release date of October 15th uh, this is Swery's cat game which the internet is extremely excited for. Uh, we're going to be seeing that in just a couple of weeks' time. Um, uh, I'm interested to see what this is because I'm always interested in a sweary game. But uh, we don't have too long to wait. It looks weird, Who's man. Swearing? I can't wait for you to play it. <laughs> Who's swearing? Uh, uh, so, uh, Swery did, like, uh, Dark Dreams Don't Die, Deadly Premonition. Um, that's He's, like, right. the lead developer. Um, yeah, okay. So, but it's, so, uh, I believe Swery was his... This looks fucking his, awful. ...was his, <laughs> um, was his um, username. Yes, it looks, it looks terrible, but given... <laughs> Given all of his games, that's yeah, where it's his like, pedigree. There's got to be something insane. else going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Well, as soon as you said, else. yeah, deadly premonition, it's like, oh right, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> the Pokemon trading card game uh, got announced and will be available. Uh, well, Monday it says, so it, it could be live right now in Australia. If not, it'll be out tomorrow. Uh, this is the uh, on free to play for iOS and Android devices. It's replacing their Pokemon trading card game online which is their existing app based on the trading game uh which will be shut down today and this is going to replace it and apparently um cards that you buy physically you can like scan in and then use in this as well um i like i i don't play this one um but pete you're not going back i can't every time i look at those like the card backs and even like the energy cards and stuff. There's something inside me that goes like, I must have it. I must have it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to. I can't afford to do. I can't afford uh, to. Do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then also, uh, um, uh, set to release on December third, twenty twenty one, is Chorus. Uh, we saw Chorus. Oh, when was it? Was it E three? It may have been a PlayStation event. I can't remember. Um, but it's this sort of like. Uh, space uh, dog fighting um, uh, game which we had seen quite a sort of like um, uh, vague trailer about when it was initially announced but uh, there's also been some hands on demos of some journos uh, getting a look at it and they all seem to be quite glowing about it really fast paced fun action uh, it's from Deep Silver and it's coming out for uh, PlayStation Xbox uh, and PC so um, yeah, there's a, there's uh, some hype building around this uh, from people who've gotten their hands on it, and they say it's tons of fun uh, and a really good space uh, dogfighting sort of game. I've always so, got time for a bit of space 
sort of yeah aerial combat and stuff like that and it's always i go into it super excited and then get either really oh, disoriented no and feel sick and uh or like this looks like it's got at least a bit of arcadey it's not sim you're not in the cockpit you're not over thinking it it looks fun like you're dodging mm-hmm. things as you fly through the middle of ships so that could be cool nothing's been as good as jedi starfighter but you know i'm willing to finally play a new game that's that's good in this regard it does look very cool if there's something else that's cool about this is <clears throat> one of the uh, one of the gameplay hands-on that I read that you you navigate like space temples that they describe to be like Breath of the Wild style puzzle temples that you yeah, that you go through. I'm like, cool. that's cool. Like, yeah. I haven't I haven't really seen vehicle temples. <laughs> um, well, the most exciting uh, thing about being in space doing dogfighting is moving around things, and often there's just a lot of nothing. Like, de- uh, No Man's Sky was yeah. so boring combat, because you just were just flying around a big vacuous void, so where true. it's like yeah. you want to be zipping in and out of ships. I think, um, was the Ubisoft Toys to Life one that I played a shitload of that was good because of that? Starlink. Uh, Starlink had heaps of that. You were flying around in a ship, you were doing trench runs all the time. So, more of that, please. Yeah, uh, and then uh, two other things about it. So um, it, it's totally built around a drift mechanics. So therefore, it is all about like dodging and weaving, which sounds really cool. Uh, and then the um, uh, the other thing about it uh, that they said is that uh, during this presentation, one of the level designers said that every uh, that they decided that early on every area of the game should have a horizon line so that you can always orient yourself and nice. and feel like you know where you're going uh which i think is uh, i'm because i'm totally the same as you guys like as soon as i get in, in any sort of like space fighting flying game i just get upside down and i'm like oh god this is awful to get around i but checked out of that star wars dope. one recently as well that i thought was going to yeah, be amazing had a few maps that just struggled yeah. to get yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perspective is a hard thing to get right in, in space. But it's good it's they're like prioritizing that as a, as a the, thing to get right. In the distance there's the horizon and it looks like there's asteroid belts and stuff going on. It's like, it's finding the... Because you can't have a horizon because yeah, that yeah. would feel bad. Exactly, yeah. So it's so like use it's something, finding the right things to put on the horizon and have something yeah. to judge your own just like, fixed there yeah totally. it's easy yeah. to make great screenshots but once you're actually flying around you're like oh, i don't want to be in here anymore i'm gonna throw up yeah yeah uh yeah it's cool it looks kind of like wipeout in space which uh which of i'm course. totally down for uh well, and others. then um the uh final and the thing band is... that brought you chaverches <laughs> uh we uh unfortunately we lied to you last week because we said we that blood bowl 3 would be launching in early access i think on last Tuesday is when it was mm. due to come out. And then they, <laughs> the developer, uh, Sinai Studio, announced that they have indefinitely delayed the early, ac- early access PC launch of Blood Bowl 3. Uh, on basically the day it was supposed to come out, they, they delayed it, which is the most to the wire delay you could possibly, possibly think of. Um, Especially with an early a- access as well. Like, let that come out and go, there's problems, it's early access. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, it was initially due to launch um, in August, like the full game, and then it got pushed to February next year. But when they pushed it, they said, uh, "We're even though we're coming out in February, in September you're going to get early access, so you can start playing in September." Um, and then the uh, I want to get oh, where's the actual uh, tweet? I didn't write it down, but the the tweet that they. Uh, put out with the release uh, with the announcement of the delay was that they are um sorry 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 okay, this is here. on and this is on the day it was meant to drop practically uh is yes that yeah basically yeah. yeah um why are they here we go um so they tweeted out that it's being uh delayed and that they are quote primarily concerned with the gameplay experience and it's like that is that's everything that's like that's, that's not like all oh, the servers aren't, aren't coping with this. It's like we don't think. <laughs> I'm. This is me talking now. But it's like we don't think our game's fun yet. Um, and so <laughs> we thought we could make it fun over the weekend, but it turns out we couldn't. So uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see uh, if it meets its February release date. Uh, so that is literally all of the video game news that happened this week. You are all up to date. Wait, and wait, hang on. Oh, don't spiel, mate. Calm oh. down. What's happening? Because uh, Will sent us a little tweet as well while we were oh. live. And yes. it's just a little thing to touch on, but it's like first shot and it's even kind of a behind the scenes shot of The Last of Us set. Um, and it's pretty nothing. It looks like a, a photo taken on an iPhone with some bad CG of a plane crash at the top. Are they real people? Uh, 
I, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, is that's... this just a shot of The Last of Us? <laughs> <laughs> that's Pedro on the right, and okay. I can't remember who they cast as Ellie. Uh, I can't believe they're going to make the whole series from third-person perspective. That's going to be really difficult bold. to see the performances. <laughs> <laughs> they got the backpacks right, though. Look they got they the backpacks nailed right. those back- backpacks. Yeah, they totally uh, did. Yeah, this is like a... I think it was just on Pedro Pascal's own feed as like a yep. bit of a hype builder thing. It's like a bad... <laughs> like, if it was an official press thing, it would be bad. But being just like on his Twitter account, it's like okay, cool. He's there. They're shooting stuff. It's also like to know. it's going to be great. There's going to be a lot of money in it. I, I say it's going to be great. It's going to be a big, great production. This is also the still you do when you are just out of like your, it's your second short film out of uni, where you're like, you know what we can do? We can stand in a field. We can look dishevelled, and we can Photoshop something really far away so it looks good. So in terms of like <laughs> impressiveness, this looks like something that'll be on someone's deviant art. I think that it was, oh, my God, what a, what a slap. Um, uh, I think that, if anything, this just this just says how good are the graphics of The Last of Us Part 2. Yes! That, <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking at these characters going, you've just plucked character models out of that game and put them in a field. Um, uh, they have nailed the look of these characters from behind. So that's encouraging, I suppose, if you really are concerned about how characters look from behind. From behind. So, or Pedro yeah. Pascal famously doing performances without showing his face. So good on it. fans will love this. Uh, I do love when people get excited about uh, this sort of thing and they go like, oh, they, like, th- this movie's going to be so good. They've, t- they've totally nailed how the characters look at the game. It's like, yeah, that's the easiest part of this entire thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Make it, it's Hollywood. Of course, they can make people look like whatever. It's about whether the movie's any good. But yeah, there you go. Uh, thank you, Little Wolf, for that breaking news. Mm-hmm.